Hello. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the size of ships, how the sizes of ships are stated in documents, in drawings, and in uh, materials that are shared with others. So the sizes of ships can be seen based on weight or based on volume, of course. Before this, we have seen that the sizes of ships can be uh, can be measured or can be defined, can be stated in terms of linear dimensions, such as the length overall, length between perpendiculars, um, beam or breadth of the ship, or its draft, and so on. But those are based on linear dimensions. But there are other ways, like what we are looking at in this uh, present lecture. So the first part is we look at the weight base way of looking at the size of the ships. The second one will be the volume base, which is the GT, the gross tonnage, and also the net tonnage. And finally, we uh, we will also mention about some ships, special ships, that are being uh, the size of their their size uh, stated in terms of their carrying capacity of its cargo. So, so the explanation is given in these slides where you can read on your own how uh, the size of ships are, can be stated in terms of displacement, dead weight or gross tonne. And there are some other special ships such as the container ship which are stated in terms of the TEUs, 20 feet equivalent units and also for car carriers and also the livestock carriers and so on. Uh, I We need to put a note here that the term weight and mass are used interchangeably and units of uh, tons, pounds, kilograms, units of mass are normally used. Although we know in physics that weight is normally we say mass multiplied by gravity, but in this case, uh, we are looking at the uh, weight and mass as being together because uh, if you go in, in, into detail in during the analysis of uh, ships uh, stability hydrostatic and so on the g uh, which is the acceleration due to gravity cancels out so the mass on this side multiplied by g is equal to mass on the other side multiplied by g so the g and g cancel out so the, that's why weight and mass are used interchangeably in ship design and operation so um, when a ship uh, displaces water the volume of water being displaced is pushed aside so that volume of water is called the volume displacement of the ship okay so so this is uh, normally expressed in meter cube so that volume multiplied by the density of water will give us ship displacement and ship displacement is given this uh, symbol delta and this through Archimedes principles is equal to the total weight of the ship and again the unit is either tons, pounds, kilogram and so on units of mass so this total weight of the ship consists of two parts which is the light ship and the dead weight of course, the light ship is the weight of the ship when it is first built completely. But at that time, it's not filled with anything yet. So there is no load, no cargo, no oil, no, car no passenger, no crew. Then that's the light ship when it was uh, first built. And this uh, weight will be fixed throughout its life. So the light ship normally consists of two parts, which is the hull weight and then the engine of the machinery weight. These are the two parts. Any ship you take normally will be this this two. Yeah. So for a steel ship, for example, the hull weight will be consisting of the weight of the steel and uh, the outfits. So outfits will be, for example, the furniture on board, uh, the fittings of the rooms and uh, the, the cabins. Yeah. So uh, the fittings in the galley. So this could be made of wood, or plastics, or aluminium, or all those sorts. So all those are lumped together as the outfits, together with the steel hull, 
it makes up the hull weight. Yeah, the the steel part of the shell of the ship, you add with all the wood and outfits, then it becomes the hull weight. And the other component of that ship be the engine or the machinery weight. So engine will be the main engine maybe, plus the auxiliary engines. And then the machinery weight will be all the other parts of the machinery. For example, the air conditioning, the pumps, the air conditioning system, and all these things. So all those are machinery, uh, machinery. So machinery plus the hull, it becomes the light ship. Whereas dead weight will be the variable load on the ship, such as cargo, the fuel, the lubricating oil, food, water, etc. This varies throughout the life of the ship or throughout the trip and the life of the ship. So maybe today is sailing with very little cargo, tomorrow is sailing a lot of food and tomorrow, the next day uh, there will be no more food. So it will be ch changing. So the date weight will be changing throughout the life of the ship. So, so at any one point, the displacement of the ship is equal to the light ship plus date weight. So as the light ship is constant, but the date weight is varying, so the displacement, the ship displacement is also varying. And ship displacement later we'll see will be uh, connected to the draft of the ship because the less uh, the weight of the ship, the lesser the displacement, so the draft will also be reduced. So that means the draft of the ship will be also changing throughout its uh, life or throughout its trips. Yeah. Okay, so the explanation for the previous slides is inside this, uh, this particular slide. So you can read on your own when uh, how the, 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 uh, uh, the, the previous slide is explained here in words. So you can read this on your own. And of course, uh, I've shown this before that, uh, for example, there is this canoe together with the paddle. So this could be the light ship. Yeah. So you have a, a canoe and a paddle. So uh, this is the light ship because it is a hull plus the machinery, which is the propulsion machinery. In this case, it is a paddle. So if a man goes on board, then that man is not part of the original ship. So that man is dead weight. Whereas the canoe and the paddle are the original uh, light ship. Yeah. So, but if a man carries some uh, some other things, for example, in this case, uh, carrying a fishing rod together with a basket, then you can see that the light ship is the canoe and the paddle, and the dead weight is the man, uh, fishing rod and the basket. Of course, we can see that in as in other bigger ships or actual ships, then you can see that the canoe and the paddle is actually the, the hull plus the machinery. And the main fishing rod and basket will be the, uh, the crew uh, plus uh, the cargo and whatever the other things that uh, the ship will carry. So those are items of dead weight, whereas the canoe and paddle is item of that ship. For the volume base, Volume base, uh, in terms of, uh, although the terms tonnage and tons are used, GT is not weight. So it is not a measure of weight. It is actually a measure of volume. Yeah, so this is because of history. Actually, if uh, history, the tons, T-U-N-S, is actually one measure of 100 feet cube of barrels for of wine that they use. So when people want to see the size of the ship, they will ask how many barrels of this tun can go on board. And because of that, they, they measure the total volume of the ship as uh, how many tons. So that become a measure of volume, standard measure of volume of 100 feet cube. Uh, so in 19, uh, 1982, a standard measurement was introduced where uh, the GT is actually the, a certain coefficient uh, related to the amount of total enclosed volume under deck of the ship. So that's uh, so that uh, differentiate between the tons of weight and mass with this uh, volume from a gross tonnage. And also gross tonnage is uh, the sizes of most commercial vessels are stated in terms of gross tonnage. GT of a ship is registered with maritime authorities, for example, 
And from here, rules and regulations are applicable according to the craft tarnish. For example, insurance and license fees are charged according to this. Net tarnish, on the other hand, is the net volume after deduction of non freight earning spaces. So, for example, uh, total and total enclosed volume of the ship consists of the the one under the hull plus the one in the superstructure, and then the only part of the cargo earning capacity is only maybe the front part of the ship. The rest are engine rooms, crew accommodation, uh, the bridge, and so on. Although these are total enclosed, those are calculated when we calculate the gross tonnage. But once we go to the net tonnage then we cannot use, uh, we, we do not consider those. So for net tarnish, we say it's gross tarnish minus non-money earning, non-money non earning tarnish. So this net tarnish, uh, the one being used for calculating charges for services such as pilotage, kennel, port charges and so on. So the, 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 the authorities will calculate how much to charge based on the net tarnish of the ship. And then there are also ships that are stated the size of which uh, people don't consider. For example, TE for for container ship, people don't 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 talk much about their GT or their displacement. But normally we want to know how many twenty feet equivalent units it can carry. The TEUs. So uh, similarly for the car carriers, uh, how many cars for Roros? Row, row, roll on, roll off. How many trucks? For ferries, cruise ships, and so on. How many passengers? For livestock carrier, you know, the car carrying sheep and cattle and so on. Then normally we say this ship can carry how many cattle? How many heads of cattle? How many uh, heads of sheep, for example? So these are the ways that we 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 uh, we determine the the size or how we state the size of the ships. Uh, we need to take a note here that government vessels are based on displacement tonnage. Normally, uh, for example, you see naval, naval ships or enforcement vessels like the marine department uh, vessels. They are stated in terms of uh, how big these ships are. Oh, it is a petrol craft, maybe 500, uh, GT, uh, five, sorry, 500 tons. When they say 500 tons, it is 500 tons displacement. It is uh, so it's stated according to the tons displacement. So aircraft carrier maybe I don't know uh, one hundred thousand tons uh, displacement. So when they say it's a, it is a naval ships, normally they will, they will be uh, stated the size of which be stated in terms of displacement tonnage. But when it is a tanker, then it is based on the weight signage. So when you say a, a ten thousand tons tanker. It is actually a 10,000 ton tanker that has been designed to carry 10,000, uh, uh, the, 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 the dead weight of which it is designed to carry 10,000 tons dead weight. So that's, uh, that's for, for a tanker. So all these are the design uh, cargo, uh, the, the, the design uh, size of the ship. For example, this is a container ship, the Triple E of Musk line. It is 18,000 TEUs. And maybe uh, you, you have looked at the homework that I gave you. And you, you know that, that basically the, the, this is no longer the biggest ship. This, this was one of the biggest ships in about 2013, I think. But now I think there's uh, maybe 21,000 TEUs or something for the biggest container ship in the world. Okay, so that's all for today, actually. For just a, a short um class just talking about the size of the chip thank you